Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's break time here and I still have a little bit of time so let's do some story time. I want to share how I got my first scholarship. If this is your first time on my channel, consider subscribing. I am Dr. Rogers, a multiple scholarship winner, currently a doctor in Korea. So this is the experience how I got my first scholarship even though I wasn't a first class degree graduate. And there is usually that myth that it is just um, first class students who can get a scholarship. Yes, I had a first class for my masters, I had a first class for my PhD birth. During my bachelor degree, I didn't have a first class birth. I successfully landed a scholarship so this is a story yeah i'm from when i graduated during my bachelor degree i keep hearing a sleeping sound here oh yeah that's a, a woodpecker i don't know if you can see him there behind yeah that's the guy there here yeah back to my story time before the distraction so what happened is that during my uh during my undergraduate studies Usually, initially, I wanted to get into medicine school, but I couldn't make it. Story for another day, which I'm gonna share as well. And when I got into my university, one of the Anglo-Saxon universities in West Africa, aka Central Africa at that moment, one of the best universities, by the way. So when I got to university, um, I couldn't make into medicine school like I said before but story for another day so I decided to enroll into environmental science I was just taking you know like I got I remember a friend we're gonna call that friend um let's say Stephen yeah so when we got to filling the application forms environmental science was my last choice because there you were given the opportunity to select three majors let me wear my mask before I kick my ass out here or look at me very weird okay so stephen you know we were filling the forms jokingly my last course i just put environmental science because i used to have a high school teacher that would talk about it so much it was a fancy science it has just popped up that time a lot of people were interested about it you know saving the environment story and all of that so what actually happened was that um during that time we had like an orientation program yeah there was ongoing orientation program and we were told if you can study hard you can be able to earn a scholarship and go abroad wow so that was a take-home message which i got during the orientation and orientation by the way which lots of people didn't go through because all we knew was you go do your masters sorry go do your bachelor and after that you look for a job or you apply for a concours we call it concours competitive entrance exam with the government and you can earn a job but i didn't want to go through all of that story for another day so i had that in mind so when i graduated back in 2011 after my bachelor degree um by then my sponsor my sponsor person who was like in charge of sponsoring me in school had assured me i was going to school study in the u.s so i prepared myself you know preparing for uh, language exams wrote all of them and then this day i got um a call that we couldn't proceed further because cost of living cost of schooling in the, in the uk in the in the u.s is very expensive I was devastated, heartbroken because I'd already laid down a plan in mind. So then again, I tried applying for another school in that was in Belgium. Found the school fee was very cheap. Mind you, all this time doing all of this, I was working based on the sponsorship of the person taking care of me so when i applied for that they were like no you can go abroad it's very expensive and that and that so um, so then now i knew like oh this is the end of it so i remember one uncle of mine told me but why don't you apply for scholarships 
So I started giving reasons why I feel I cannot apply. First, I said I'm not a native English speaker. I need to write TOEFL. I need to write this exam. Another aunt of mine too told me, no, you don't need them as long as you're from a non-native English. Um, you're from an Anglo-Saxon university. That was the first encouragement. So within that time, I tried applying for the German scholarship that prepared all my documents. I've made a video on that, on how I lost my first scholarship. Please go watch it. So I couldn't get that one. It wasn't my fault. Preparing for six months, I was heartbroken again. So the first scholarship I ever got, I saw the announcement at the uh, at university campus. It was put up there. So my first intuition was like, ah, this is Africa. I'm not interested. Then afterwards, I came back. I was like, no, but I'm graduated. I have free internet in the house. Um, what am I doing? I'm just sitting there, and you know. And there was a girl who had already applied and had um, she also benefited from a scholarship, Erasmus Mundo, and she had her GPA was lower than mine. So that was the first motivation too. So I said to myself, okay, fine. You know what? Let me go check. When I was going back there, that information had been torn off from the notice board, so it wasn't there. Fortunately, my younger sister then used to, because for her bachelor, she did communication. So when she went for internship at the, at the radio station, they had sent the information to them to advertise. So when I finally got hold of that information, and she was told it's a good one, I applied. Something in me just was just clicking telling me this is for me so the final day i submitted I, my application was the deadline so i sent it they confirmed everything after a month they told me because i, I had two choices either ethiopia or south africa and of course i wanted to go to a more fancy nice beautiful south africa but i wasn't selected again for that but i was selected for ethiopia and trust me guys that is i've had so many scholarships that is the best scholarship i enjoyed best in the sense that i got trained by one of the best experts in the world in my field right now I fell under his wings. If I'm really good at what I do now, which I know I'm good, upcoming scientist in soils, he got he trained me. Secondly, the cost of living there was, yeah, the cost of living there was pretty 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 low, so I could afford to save a lot of money and help back home. Secondly, I enjoy the diversity of ethiopia ethiopia guys is awesome you've got to go to Addis. when you go to ethiopia don't earn in Addis. go into the cities go into the different sites i even went to the place where queen sheba had to visit africa do you know there are castles in africa in africa that's in ethiopia i enjoyed all of those things so that scholarship permitted me to build a strong foundation which i'm still using now it permitted me to uh, be trained by one of the best in the world we are still in touch it's like a mentor to me and even thanks to that i had to publish my first scientific paper secondly um I, I, i'm not even keeping track of counting and then, then when i got finished from there before i got finished i got another scholarship again and i got i just kept having them and having them and having them if i tell you i just keep having and having them guys I apply you i apply so if you love this video subscribe stay connected i'll be sharing more stories how to inspire you and one of them by the way um today we're trying to select a candidate for our team there is one important tip which came up from my boss i'll be sharing that as well stay subscribed see you again bye